is late. Late again. Looks like it's Matt. Tell a friend. Seriously, cut, cut the music. I need the views, guys. Come on. We'll see how that goes. Do I, that pro that's probably not going to be in time, is it? One Punch Man, 104, Superhuman. Uh, yeah, it was a good chapter. It wasn't like the greatest chapter in the world, but it was still a, it was still an entertaining chapter at the very least. Um, things I liked about it uh, it was we got to, we got to see things. What a what a point. Chapter starts off with the three samurai. Uh, I keep calling them samurai the swordsmen. Um, I was really impressed with them to be honest. Like it was a good way. The best thing, one of the best things about this chapter is we got to see kind of like how the samurai interact with each other. I like seeing like these little bits of like you know they're not like this perfect well ordered machine team. They have their own personalities. They're not like yes we will do this because we're the best team ever and we're the best friends ever. And we see this very clearly from how they interact. You just repeated your points, Matt, well done. They start off by meeting Devil Longhair, and Devil Longhair, I've got to say, I really do like. Mostly because he reminds me a bit more of the older One Punch Man villains, or even the side chapter One Punch Man villains, where they're pretty powerful, they can be threatening, but they're also quite silly at the same time. Like, more, more of a classic One Punch Man villain, because obviously the stakes have been higher, so that's of course why, you know, we've seen all these intimidating monsters. But even, like, the old school ones were a bit stupid, despite having, like, some actual power behind them, like Crablante, Personification Electric Pool Cord. I kind of put Devil Longhair along the lines with them. And that's obviously really just from, like, his design's, like, very flamboyant all over the top. But more than anything, it's, of course, just his his <laughs> his lines, which I love. Because they're just, like, they make no sense. And that's probably the funniest bit of the chapter with that bit with Okamatachi, Iain, and him. So when, obviously, when, Iain, when Okamatachi launches the wind blade and he blocks, he's just like, you fools like frogs trapped in a well in an ocean full of hair. And then, and then Iain's just like, whoa, he brought the attack. And what he said didn't make sense. It's just, it's such a funny mo. And that made me laugh quite a bit. But going back to um the swordsman, of course, like Okamatachi is attracted to Devil Long Hair. I don't feel okay about that. And well, I've spoken to people about this as well, and they're like, well, it's like if there's like different races in games, and like you know they they fall in love and get married and things, that's okay. And like that's true. But the way it is with monsters and humans, to me, is very much like, you know, if you're a monster, you have literally given up on your humanity. It's not something you're ready to, like, you know, it's, you become a monster by, like, basically, you're a bad person. You have, like, a dark obsession. And so far, we have not met a good monster. Who knows we might want one in the future. But, you know, natural monsters are grown from, like, negative thoughts and emotions and obsessions that lead to, you know, this being who just wants to destroy and have a, have a natural urge for violence. So... Yes, we haven't seen a monster yet that leads us to believe that there's good monsters, so until there's proof, there's that. And, like, it was weird. It was definitely really weird how apparently Komatachi, because, like, Ian, even, Ian and Bushi George like, oh, not this again. Um, it's strange, but, like, I do like their little dynamic, like I said. So, obviously, Komatachi, I can't remember exactly what Komatachi said, but Bushi George's reaction in his face was like, Yo, can I kill him? Just like, just, that's the kind of relationship they have is like, just like, they get on each other's nerves, but they pull together when the job needs to be done and that, I do quite like that. But, the most impressive person in this was Iain, of course, because Iain was the first one, of course, he was like, he, you see him take his leadership role, like, you see why he's Ma uh, Atomic Samurai's top student, and we see here why, like, he's A-class rank 2. Because one of the first things he does is, he doesn't underestimate at all uh, the power of Devil Long Hair. In fact, he starts thinking, okay guys, stop arguing, we've got this to worry about, because these are literally all the possibilities of this kind of power. And he lists off, like, you know, he lists off, like, spearing, like, um, like, weaving his hair, things like that, and just, like, all these different plans. I don't think it was either of those. But, you know, like, all the different possibilities of E.I. and uh, that Iain lists off, and like, you know, he's quite intelligent in that sense, and I do like that, because obviously, you know, I suppose that makes him stand out from Atomic Samurai, because what we know of Atomic Samurai, his attitude about stuff is very simply, just keep cutting, and just keep fighting until you get better, or the job's done, just do what you can do, until then. Um, and they talk about obviously made doing pride to Atomic Samurai. That art, by the way, was great. When Atomic Samurai just dice and care for everyone. That always looks great whenever Atomic Samurai dices up people. But it was just made so much better. But obviously, like, it looks amazing. And then you just got the two monsters, like, ah, uh, just sweating, not knowing what to do in this situation. It was great. I love that. It was very good. Um. <laughs> So, of course, they're, like, they're talking about the plans, and something I find interesting as well is we kind of got confirmation from this that each of the, um, 
each of the students each had their specialties in sword play. So like, for example, I used to think I used to think it was like I, I had ideas about this, but that kind of con but that got confirmed for me this chapter because obviously you've got like um so Okamatachi, she's good at slashing. Like she like obviously and that's specialised in her like in obviously the wind slashes which you can use. Bushi drill, he's good at drilling like at stabbing and thrusting motions, you know? Hence why he's also got the drill sword. And then Iain, I used to think it was slashing too, because that's what we'd seen him do, but in reality Iain, which makes sense from his name, uses the EI type of sword style, which is basically a quick draw of sword, where you like you know you pull it out, you slice really fast, and you just sheave it back in. That's how EI fights. So I do find that interesting. Something else we find interesting too is when they talk about Komatachi's wind slice. Um, like it's not something that is replaced. Uh, like you know you can't copy it. No one else can do it apart from Komatachi. So does this mean obviously like that atomic? This would I take this as that atomic samurai is the kind of teacher, and I'll get into his teachings in a sec. Is He's the kind of teacher who nurtures, like, he wants them to follow after him and being good swordsmen and maybe teach them the basics of swordsmanship, but at the same time, I imagine he must, like, at least go, okay, take from my style and use your own to develop your own style, which is what we're seeing here, because no one is using, like, the atomic style, like, like, atomic slashes or anything like that, obviously, because he's on another level to them, but at the same time, it's there. Um, but we do kind of get, we do see the relationship between Atomic Samurai and uh, the Swordsman in this chapter too. And it is nice to see the kind of master he is. Um, I, I was speaking to some people as well and we were talking about, well, I, I wasn't there, so. Good point. Um, how good of a master Atomic Samurai is. And I think this to me proves how good of a master he is. Because like I said, I think he's helping to nurture their own styles. But also I think from this like this flashback, it takes place before the Monster Association attack where like, you know, Eiyan and um and the swordsman go up to him like what would happen if a monster of this degree was to like show up like, a monster who was unstoppable like the very symbol of despair and atomic samurai is like well like he first of all he doesn't like he's not like what that would never happen no, that like blow off his answer he's like well behind if that was to happen and like he takes it very seriously like he's not like joking around or anything like he does, he's not really a joker but at this point that's what we see and he's like well I guess I'd have to go beyond human. So maybe, and this is such a stretch to say, he has some idea of limits, and not saying in the sense that like Dr. Genius of like studying um, evolution and everything like that, and getting this idea of limits and like, you know, the actual like, you know, an actual person's limit to break like Saitama did, but maybe because obviously, you know, he's a very experienced warrior, and he's obviously having to constantly like, you know, push himself further to become this great swordsman, to be like the best he can be, maybe he has this idea of what it is to like break a limit, like a vague, a vague sense to me, so maybe that's why he's saying about going beyond human, like he's got this vague idea of it, same to like, I imagine Bang would have a similar premise in his head as well, but like I'm not saying they're like, they're like, oh I know all about limits or anything like that, just that makes sense to me with like the kind of people that they are, these experienced warriors, like they, they have a, like, you know, I think they've got a kind of sense for this kind of thing. But that's such a stretch to say, I recognise that. Um, the fight itself, I didn't have too much to say about the fight, but more than anything, it's they, they're using this as a time to grow more than anything. Like there were some good bits, of course, like I think Eiyan just backing them up, and obviously, you know, it was interesting to see how they were doing it, and obviously like the swordsman said, like, like this is why Eiyan really impressed me, because he, uh, he shows, like I said, why he's A class rank too, because he straight away like, you guys, we need to work together, like don't rely on your eyes, focus on reflexes, like, you know, sense what you can, and just try and fight that way, you know, I thought that was really good. Um, and they, of course, are using this as their great time to grow, because they recognise there are a lot of people who are not normal humans, like their master, Tatsumaki, and Pig God, which they saw from last chapter, and I like how they use it as motivation to try and better themselves, like, this is a good chance for us to try and push ourselves further. Um, as for the chapter, as for the fight itself, it's a debate on whether they will beat them. I would personally love them to beat Devil Long Hair. And, yeah. And I fully get if they don't, because there's, there's two demon class left. There's uh, Devil Long Hair and there's Bug God. And, of course, we've got two S classes we haven't really seen, which is Puri Puri Prisoner and uh, Dark Shine. You know, we haven't really seen those guys. Uh, well, like we see, obviously, Puri Puri, but Dark Shine hasn't really done a lot. So it wouldn't make sense if he came and showed up to uh, fight one of them. But at the same time, you know... I just look at what they're trying to do and what they achieve, and I think it'd be great because they don't have to do a lot more because the level, like, after this, the only ones to really worry about are the executives, and we're going to need the S-classes for those fights. Like, I'd be okay if we just let them have this one, and then they can just kind of sit in the background. Because, like, okay, they took down a demon as a team, because they also have the experience of working together, which is the main thing, you know. They are, like, you know, they're all experienced swordsmen, 
you know, they are A class 2, 3, and 4, which says a lot about, like, not only their, hero like, you know, their heroic feats, but their skills as well. They have a large variety of attacks, like, obviously, you got, you, you got long range with a combo touch with wind slice, you've got Bushi Draw Special Sword, and you got the speed of the iron, and to top it off, they've got something which a lot of heroes don't normally have, which is teamwork. They are all students under Atomic Samurai, they are all used to, I imagine, fighting with each other, used to each other's skills, they know how to work together, so I think it makes sense if they do beat Devil Long Hair. I'd love it if they beat Devil Long Hair. I understand if they don't, but I will be a bit sad if they don't as well. But like that's that's my opinion on it. And then of course we get to the ending where we cut away from the fight. I don't think we're gonna see the fight itself, but then again I thought like I mean the by the that fight, I mean the I don't think we're gonna see the fight between Devil Long Hair and the Swordsman itself, and we'll just cut back to hopefully one of them being beaten. Um but I and again I said that about the My Mask fight and I was very wrong on that. So we get to the ending of Puri Puri getting attacked by the monsters and it's like it's such a cliche but I love it of just like the the ending of just like that will throw everything out and that will surely damage them and then they're just kind of good standing there like and you see the heart and you're like okay because I'm I'm excited for the next chapter because we should be getting a Puri Puri beatdown. Um, I'm I'm ready because like the thing is Puri Puri is a is a bit of a complex character to like because there's the part of him right we know his past where obviously you know you know he went to prison because he was like oh I could do stuff to the guys there no one will really complain and that's bad. But there is also that part of him that is genuinely trying to be a hero. Pretty much ever since he lost the Deep Sea King, that's been his motivation. When the public called him out, called him the Class S failure, he's been trying to become a better hero, a better fight, just a better person in general is from what I can see. He's doing his best to actually be, prove himself as a hero. And I like this about him, but of course it's the past that kind of messes it all up. But... I think overall you've got to like Puri Puri because he is just this over the top character and obviously One Punch Man parodies a lot of stuff and really, and it took me this long to realise it, he's basically a Jojo character which took me too long to realise because first of all there's a lot of characters in Jojo that are just villains when they show up and then they turn into heroes almost instantly. Like when they are villains they're doing some of the worst stuff in the series and then like the next episode they're like ready to lay down their lives and they're like look this is my bro the main character. Um, and it's just this all this stuff that culminates to this point. Um, yeah. Plus, also, he is a giant muscly man who's very over-the-top and flamboyant, and his main method of attack is these giant rush punches. So, yeah, he is very much a JoJo character, but I'm ready for that. And also, just like the small things of hyping it up. Oh, one sec. The fact that his jumper isn't torn yet and that's like a sign of his 50% power, sure, he's probably just wearing a bigger jumper, but that's all it'll be. Um, but like, if there's just that, just the small things that hype it up, it's great. Uh, but yeah, I really like this chapter. Uh, what did you think of it? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Give us a video review or like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Now I just have to catch up on like four episodes of Promise Neverland and four or five chapters of One Piece and more of that than my Academia, then I'm all caught up again. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Goodbye.